My grandfather migrated from Japan in 1905, and like a lot of the Japanese immigrants, the so Chinese immigrants, before the Japanese immigrants, they did the railroads. So that's what my grandfather started at. The, the, that took him up the west coast, and eventually he started um, helping people clear land, and that was in Deep, which is about six miles from here. So that's when he started first farming in 1911. And then my uncle and my cousin still run that farm. But it's been a kind of a nice progression at each step of the way, I, you know, the way that I kind of look at things is that my dad and my grandfather all had opportunities and, and were able to make use of it, but, they, but, but there was also very instrumental people along the way. When my grandparents and my parents were interned, they leased their land to uh, the Staddlemans, and they got their property back. So, you know, there's a lot of people in the valley that didn't, but Dad, my grandfather did. So we're really, really fortunate. And if he didn't, who knows, and, you know, what would have happened then? My mom's side was, lived up in Tacoma. They had a store, and they lost it. You know, they had to sell and liquidate. But then, like mom and dad always told me, look on the bright side, you know, my, my aunts and uncles on my mom's side were in the medical field and, and engineers and things like that. So, you know, that's, it's, it's not all bad. You know, it's, it's like fate. So, and, and just like when mom and dad were interned in the camp, you know, that's where they met. So for her to go from, you know, just having some friends and having to work at the store and stuff like that, to then being around all these people that were her own age, you know, she didn't see the, the travesty of it as much because she was just seeing what was going on in front of her. Dad was a G-man, is what he used to say. He's in, in camp, but a G-man, he was a garbage man. Oh. So he got to go from camp to camp and pick up people's garbage. So I always give the story. It's a romantic, probably overdoes it, but I say, Dad got to go check out all the cute girls in the camp and settled on Mom. So, <laughs> yeah. What have you noticed that's that's any different from when you were growing up? The just like in most egg, it's the efficiency that everything is done at now. Holly moth pheromone trap, and what this does. There's inside, there's a sticky board. And up above, there's a pheromone dispenser. And the, and the males smell, get attacked by the scent. So they go and fly in here and get stuck. If there's a high enough population that there's a lot of males stuck in here, then we have to make a decision of whether we want to put any type of input in to control it or whether we could live through the little bit of damage it might do. So that's just one of the, tool, one of the many tools that we have for, it's not like, my grandfather's generation that they just put on a spray and it killed everything. <laughs> we really want to go and keep our beneficials out here, whether it's a, it's a lace wings, ladybugs, praying mantises, all those good things. You could go on your, self, your smartphone <laughs> and I could do that. I could go over here and say, oh shoot, boy, the weather, I could be in, in um, another part of my field and realize it's getting too cold in another. Wow. And my, like those wind machines that protect the blossoms, they're all on 
on sensors. So when it drops to 34 degrees before it gets to too cold, they kick on and then they go and get the weather, you know, they bring the warm air down below. The labor supply the, the, the is just not what it used to be. And what was here are very um, hardworking, skilled labor. And that's one thing I wanna make sure everybody knows. Egg, agricultural work is skill. If you don't think it's, it's not skill, then you should try it <laughs> and make a living off of it. Just like how we, why we did the you pick in the first place. We didn't have, there wasn't any place in the valley that offered you pick apples. And we, had an, we have an apple tree out here and customers would come with little kids and they say, boy, they would be filled with golden delicious apples. And people would say, can we just, can my kids just pick one each? So we, that's where it's like, I, when I planted those, that block, I put it high density dwarf trees and made it to where it's marked easily for all these different varieties. The number of varieties we grow is close to 100 now. And it all started with back out of desperation when we were, when we couldn't sell our apples. The apples weren't worth anything. There was a, the, a spray called LR there. And whether we sprayed it or not, nobody bought apples. The USDA stopped buying apples for oh. school lunches. Even if you could say you didn't spray, nobody bought apples. So out of desperation, I picked a bin of Red Delicious, because that's what I had, I grew three types, uh, four types of apples. Picked a bin of Red Delicious, sat out in the barn, was working on my tractor in this cold October day, I had a sign outside that said, apples, five cents a pound. And I, if I had, if, you know, a customer drive in, I'd wipe off my hands, help them out, and if they bought a box of apples, I would drop it to three cents a pound. And I still remember people walking out with a box for, you know, under three bucks. So with these different varieties that we decided, a lot of it's from customers' requests. A lot of it's just from, you know, reading about something in the industry newsletter, talking to nurserymen, what's neat coming around, heirloom varieties that, that have real, really great attributes, mm -hmm. great flavor, but they don't last long. Well, you don't have to keep the apple to May and June. You just want to have it, you pick it, you want to have it good for the market in September, October. People aren't gonna go and, you know, you don't have to go and have it long-term storage. With the cider varieties, hard cider um, boom, there's a lot of varieties out there that we've planted in the last few years, so. But those are exciting. It's, that's what, what's fun, kind of fun to grow these different varieties, so. Why, why the Hollywood market? How is it? That, that's, that, yeah, other the Hollywood is, is one of the first ones I've done, mm -hmm. through, through the Rossi's, yeah. mind you, because mm -hmm. for Joe, you know, Joe started the farmer's markets mm -hmm. and got the fruit from me, took it back, and then he just had a small little display with his vegetables. That's what he mainly did. Then he realized that there was, he was selling more and more, so he called me up and said, Randy, how about if we just have a different stall for you? Mm -hmm. So that's how we got started with Hollywood. Hollywood is always, I enjoy stopping there. I see a lot of customers that, that come up to the farm. So here you are, I mean, here's this, beautiful location and you you produce beautiful fruits for people to enjoy what is it about it that you enjoy the most i enjoy well it depends on i enjoy when it's over and when i get to go pick the last <laughs> fruit and then all i have to do is worry about you know selling it all that's a great feeling it's all protected under cover all the work Producing that fruit is there. I the I get a biggest kick out of whether visiting a farmer's market and having a, a person, especially if they're an older person, take a bite of the apple. It's like this is the best apple I've ever eaten. That's some of the most rewarding that you won't get if you just raise it and send it off and never see the people that that consume it. So that I enjoy having people come up here and see how beautiful it is. I mean, it's the, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world and I wouldn't trade it for anything. The, far, the lifestyle allows me to go and set my own schedule to a point. Uh, the, the crew I have, the employees I have are great, whether it's the people working in the, the orchards, whether it's a fruit stand or working from a farmer's market, I couldn't ask for better people to be around. So all of that stuff makes, you know, I, I'm fortunate, so.